record. All right, we're recording. Um, okay, uh, welcome everyone to the Tuesday, <clears throat> July 30th, Working Group Component Standard Meeting. We've got a healthy agenda. Um, since we were just chatting a little bit about the optional fields thing, I think let's just jump in there first, since that's now in our minds. So Justin, do you want to give a brief overview of what this is? Absolutely. I put up a cap to describe a uh, thread which happened, which I started on the mailing list, um, where people were generally supportive, but like wanted to sort of go to cap. So cap is the next process, next step in the process. The idea is basically um, today our component config uh, fields are mostly not optional types, and so this has two main consequences. The first one of which is if you try to serialize out a component config object where you've only set one or two fields, you get all the other fields set, uh, though with empty values, um, which makes it harder to know like which fields you actually set. Um, and this general problem of not making a difference between a default value and uh, the unset value also applies to make things like patching a lot harder. It's hard to uh, apply a patch over the top. Um, it makes generation harder. So if I have the case I outlined before, it's like I end up possibly blitting over or blotting over fields I had no intention of setting. Um, and essentially, it's the same issue we have with flags, where you know sometimes we have to do this like was flag set uh, logic which is a little, always a little scary. Um, or we use magic sentinel values to say, like, this is the unset value. But um, we essentially lose that ability now in component config unless we switch all the fields or the majority of the fields to be um, optional. So to be able to, some fields are already, like a slice is already can tell the difference between uh, unset. Well, that's sort of not true. Uh, but some fields might you might be able to tell already. But uh, basically, the trick would be to move, make all fields be pointer to a primitive value, pointers to a primitive value. And then we would actually have state on whether a field was set explicitly to a value or was unset. And uh, there would be a difference between the empty value and the unset value. And then there's a sub discussion about whether or not we can keep the internal types as they are or whether they need to go uh, to pointer types. It would be nice if we didn't have to change the internal types. I think there's a debate uh, about whether around, that breaks round tripping, for example. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> it probably naively breaks round tripping. Like if you're actually trying to go all of the way to another external type and back to the one you had and get the same and print the same YAML out of that. Um, I don't even I do know how that would work for like the field, field conversions. Yeah. Like, would I? Eh. Because, so if we switch to using pointers for optional fields, and then the internal type isn't pointers, it's just values. Um, today, all of those would get copied into the external fields, which would initialize the pointers and no longer omit empty those values, even if you had omitted them originally. So you won't get the same YAML through a round trip. Um, there's, diff I guess, different possible solutions to that. Like you could make all the internal type fields pointers too, and that just makes it harder on developers using them. You could do some crazy shit and like go, you know, have something that understands the defaults for each way and then like figure out, oh, if it's, if it's the default value, like I'll omit it and not initialize the pointer, which like, it's probably gonna be slow and really hard to implement. Um, so there's, and there's some things to think about here, but then the other thought is, well, you know, with component config, maybe it's okay to either make the internal types pointers, which I, I still don't like because it puts a burden on, on the implementers of the component. Um, 
or maybe we don't have to worry about round tripping because most components just read config in and then have it in memory and like might expose it to monitoring um, or for tests, but there's sort of workarounds like often monitoring data is kind of like needs to be cleaned anyway. And so people can do that and stuff like that. So um, yeah, there's some thoughts around that. But the, I guess the question I have is like, how many tools like kubeadm would have a hard time if round tripping wasn't perfect? The config print defaults command in kubeadm would likely need to have some significant changes. Mm -hmm. I am actually. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I am actually not quite sure. Uh, we can simply do away with the fuzzer in kubeadm, but uh, we'll have to just uh, bake in a lot of uh, tests that simply do a one-way conversion. And this is kind of tedious. There might be a way to automate that To In my mind, the challenge with the round tripping will look is Suppose we have V1 and everything is, or a field is a V1, a field is a pointer in, the, in V1, not in internal, is a pointer in V2. And let's suppose it's a pointer to string. Uh, if I don't set the field in V1, but convert it to V2 via the internal type, it will, it will appear as a pointer to empty, to the empty string. Whereas if I didn't do that, if I didn't set the field directly in V2, it would appear as nil. So I think there is a, like we, we do lose the knowledge of whether fields were set. And so we do risk. Yeah, when there's, we introduce, yeah. There's that and it's even trickier because it's not, um, you can't just like implement emit empty from internal to external. You have to understand like something to do with the, you have to understand the defaults for the external type that you're targeting. Right. So if the default, so if I'm in V1 and like even say the default is zero in V1 and I'm going to V2 and the default's five in V2 and I don't, I emit the field in V1 um, or say I set it to five in V1 and then it gets read in to the internal as five. When it goes to V2, it can emit the five in the V2, because if it reads the V2 back in, it'll still be a five, right? So it's even trickier than that because defaults are attached to the versions. Yeah, and we kind of rely on the fact that we store the default into the internal type. So that that's a, an expectation or an assumption when working with the internal types. Right, Whereas kind of the point, I, right, is that the when it makes it to the internal type, it's totally reified. Now there's the, there's the other question, like we've had this conversation a couple meetings ago about whether the machinery should change its conversion model and do direct conversions between external types instead of going through the internal type. I need to go back and rewatch that meeting to, to remember all the context, but that did come up. Uh, a question for Justin. So the KIP, uh, is this like a recommendation or are, are you suggesting that all the component configs, like even those that are approaching GA uh, V1 should uh, apply this principle? So, is it, yeah. so as I understand it, it's only Kubelet, that's, Kubelet config that's in beta. Uh, some of the other ones that are in alpha are looking to go to beta. Um, I was, that's what sort of motivated this is I think I saw a kept to bring scheduler to beta and I was like, oh, like, do we want to talk about whether we want to make things optional before we move things to beta? Cause it's, it's going to be harder to deal with kubelet. Um, the, the external YAML shouldn't change. So there may be an argument for that, but it's still going to be tricky because, uh, so in other words, a YAML file that was valid before should still be valid now. But uh, there are still like incompatibilities based on like different users, like client Go users are going to see differences. Uh, my intention was that yes, we would 
if we think this is the right thing to do, that we would change everything. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't change it in one big PR, uh, but we should, like, if we, it would be weird to say, yes, we think that component config should retain the notion between a value that was specified versus not specified, and then have some that are sort of legacy and leftover and not, but that don't make that distinction, in my opinion. So I would like do whichever one we want to do first, like scheduler or component, uh, kube controller manager, whichever one makes sense. Yeah, kube proxy would be in that list too, if possible. Thank one. You. Uh, I'll, just, I'll make a note that traditionally, like when I've worked on config systems, we've relied on merging uh, with a default config in order to, as the base, in order to get this behavior. So our, our defaulting mechanisms were usually config merges. Instead of having the, con the conversion from external to internal populate the internal type with defaults that are like magically about the type. Um, so like if I wanted to have a version of defaults, right, like I would, I would do an internal type merge with something that was generated from the default struct, like for that type. Let's see, yeah, so. And it's like, so I'm not like conflating the. From the defaults and then you would read the external over it. I don't know, like t today we attach um, the defaults to the, like the defaults are part of the version. Exactly, and uh, it's part of the machinery as well, right? Which it doesn't have to be. Yeah, we want it to be part of the version though. Because it you you need yes. a, you need a way to change defaults. If I'm you, I'm not saying what I'm pointing out is the conflation is not that the defaults are stored with the versioned type, but that when the type is converted, that the type is populated with the defaults. Oh yeah, I've always felt that was a little strange. Like the the fact that that happens automatically is a, a leaky abstraction. Yeah, Justin, do you know if we have conversion functions that will not default as part of the conversion? The answer is yes. Um, but there is a separation, right? There's a separation between conversion functions and defaulting functions. I think yeah. whether or not you can, from outside API machinery, like call them separately, I don't know. You can call them separately. You cannot call them through, oh, through Codec Factory if you use the legacy. Um, encoder and decoder it'll it'll work it'll it'll give you non-defaulted structs um, but then I, there's not really much like be, once you have those you have to then call api machinery things on them so it, it, i mean all of this stuff is like really like immature for this kind of use case. So I, I would go on to say, like, we can do whatever we want in the component repo. Yeah, we can, I mean, I, like, I want component config is already very different. API machinery, ideally. Uh, sorry, repeat, sorry, I was talking over you. What'd you say? Oh, I want it to be compatible with API machinery. Yes, I mean, like what we're doing with component config already is leverages API machinery. Um, it's very different from the the path uh, that objects take through the API server. Yeah, uh, the API server does some non-standard hacks to make things work with media types, like that are not part of part of the encoders and decoders, which I think is weird, and we should fix that eventually. Um, it, it does operations where it like recreates uh, structs, but then attaches different serializers so that the media type changes, um, which is a very low level thing to be doing, you know, like outside of API machinery packages but, and runtime. But, uh, so like the fact that API machinery or the fact that the API server has to do that in order for it to work, like tells me that the libraries right, are not 
really structured in a, in a way like where like all of the use cases are fledged out and exposed in a sensible interface. Yeah. So if we have to assemble some things in the component repo in order to make defaults work sensibly, um, then that isn't so surprising to me. But we don't really have like a, I, I haven't seen a lot in CodeGen for like merging objects. There's really not much in there. I mean, you can read, you can always read in a, a new config file over like a pre-initialized structure. But then it fails at the nested merge, right? Um, not sure. That does it. Yeah. I don't. I think it. And pointers might change. Work. It. I think it can work, but I have to try it. If we could have that mechanism, I mean, like it's it's not so hard to build something that does the defaulting funk on a base struct with the goal ultimately of being able to use the, the defaults from one version, but still have the pointers in the internal version. Like, yeah, I'm not sure like what the YAML decoder, will, our YAML decoder will do. Like, I mean, if you just decode JSON using the JSON library, right? It's, it's simple. It's just a merge on top of whatever is pre-initialized. Mm -hmm. I, for, I think for most, well, I, I don't know if we're using some third party JSON decoder now for efficiency, but. Um, I, I, have a, I don't want to monopolize the meeting. I have a suggestion. It looks like, uh, like Bobby Salamat commented that he has uh, like a, a want for this for the scheduler one. Shall I do a sort of work in progress uh, one for scheduler? And we can have a look at it and we can like plummet through and see how bad it gets in terms of, you know, like the internal types and then. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like this, just prototype it out and then you can point to what the actual problems are instead of us speculating about it. Th this comment did confuse me, but. Bobby's one at the top? Yeah, but it may be because of the sheer number of Boolean statements that are in there. Um, I, I think. If, he, if, if you read it, if you read it, it sounds like he's talking about not being able to know that a flag was provided. Oh, but you which, can know that. That's exactly. Um, there's that's there's some reflection on the flags that you can do that's built into view flag. But I think he's saying in the in the component config world, he wouldn't be able to do that, right? Oh, you're saying like how is why? Well, is the, yeah, maybe he's just using flag to mean field or something. Yeah, he's yeah. That could be. That, that would make total sense. I mean, it, it, yes, like if, if you did not have the flags, then you would not be able to do this. But the comment sounds like we can't do this with flags. So yeah, that makes sense. And it also may be that you'd like just didn't know how to do it with like the flag set because it's not, it's not obvious how to do that. You no, know? it, it, I had to read the docs for like 15 minutes to find this. But we do eventually want to get rid of the flags entirely. So, right. So yes, it's still the plan. All so uh, the, the, the existence <laughs> of a flag workaround is not sufficient for the our glorious feature. Um, would you would you just like click that link really quick? This one? Yeah, this was from the uh, another SIG POC thing that I wrote a, like a week ago. But um, basically, yeah, like like line forty one right there. I this little part of the library um, has. It builds a flag struct so that people can figure out, like from outside of it, whether the flags were set and what values they were. Right. And it's like really repetitive. It's actually the same thing we do in Legacy Flag. In Legacy Flag, you do that. Yes, I'll show you. Yeah, I should try to to vendor in Legacy Flag into this project to see what it feels like. Yeah, we so we use it in the set. And merge methods. And okay, like so you but call only, changed. Yeah, they only read out the value if it was actually set in the command line. This is another option as well to like wrap it in optional float, which is sort of what you have here, right? Like so that it will force type safety or force errors everywhere. Yeah, the, I just don't like how gross that makes your YAML when you do that. Yeah, we'd have to then do something. 
functional in the decoder too. Would we be interested in doing something like I did, which is exposing a struct which has a, a, a the changed value provided, <laughs> like on line twenty five? I don't think we should have changed in the YAML in the like the final uh, YAML, right? But in the that's in the internal type, right? Like or oh, I see. Like internal types track whether it was set in the external type. Yes, I mean you could. You that's could do interesting. That. It's interesting because um, you could code gen it and it would work, but it it's like now you have this struct field that's like it could be a private field, and then. <laughs> I, I don't like it, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's possible. It's very go, mm. as opposed to like trying to get a tri state, you know, in a, using a pointer. Yeah, you know, it just makes the internal type big. With, uh, you just add a bunch of bulls to the internal type, you mean? Yeah. And you don't, yeah, it's actually. You could track it in a separate struct. Um, and then what you would do is. You would, I'm just trying to think if that gives you a whole lot of value. So you would. Track it, in, or in a separate structure, or in the internal one, um, you would still use the internal type fields like you are today, assuming that they've been initialized correctly, um, and just assuming that like the default or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever did the conversion like made. Would not have to change the defaulting yep. representative of what was set. Yep, and then um, conversion. So conversion into the internal type would set whether they were provided. Mm -hmm. Conversion out of the internal type would should not potentially pay attention to whether they were provided on the way in because it's going from values that are like under the assumptions of one version to another. So I, that. So basically, the, like if the default the current behavior in V1 and V2, you don't want to pay attention to the it wasn't set. I I would argue that if I'm like upgrading right in my config, and I didn't set a value for something, I I would accept the new defaults. Personally, oh, that's a good point too. That I mean, like that it's like if I didn't if I didn't override that value and and you've set something new that makes way more sense, like don't mess with it. For me, <laughs> it's like, there's well, there's different. Like it's 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 interesting because there's yeah. that position which is like I'll take mm -hmm. the new defaults, and there's the other position which is that the I expressed my intent with an assumption of defaults, and you shouldn't change my intent intent across the upgrade. Yeah, I mean there could be two forms of upgrade: one that does ex mm -hmm. explicit output of every field, and then one that does that obey that does the defaults upgrade with only the fields provided. Um, I, I think, think I think it's really dangerous to to change intent unless it's a new API field that was added with explicit backwards compatibility considerations. I there I hear you, and I the a similar statement would be that only what's provided explicitly in config represents the intent of the operator, and that yeah, especially with like something yeah. as big. As uh, you know, like the kublet config. Yeah, I'm um, not. Sure, yeah, I'm not sure how practical it is, but we're almost out of time here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I want to. I don't, I'm not going to get kicked out of this room, but I did want to talk really quick about Ross's um, cube proxy PR, and like I would like to merge that if possible. Um, maybe like one thing we could do, Ross. Oh, Ross is—is is he still here? <clears throat> he had to drop two minutes ago. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about it next meeting then. Um, there's no point if he's not here. Basically, I want to merge it, and I'd be—I like—I'd be happy to rephrase it as like do a V1 alpha two or something to prototype those ideas instead of pushing to beta. If we want to wait on beta to figure out this optional fields thing, just so that's on the record. <clears throat> I uh, just wanted to point out that we should probably remove my documents about overrides from the agenda because we already covered it multiple times uh, uh, in discussions on the doc itself. And I already provided like a summary of what's going on. 
uh, I need to find time for this. And the other point is that it's not going to happen in 116. So the cap itself, so, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay, that's okay. Um, I definitely appreciate the, the write-up. I look forward to when you do have time. All right. Um, okay, thanks everyone. Good, good meeting. Justin, um, feel free to send me that prototype um, when you have a chance. Okay, sure. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.